sleep, breathe deep, bless you. Maybe you've heard that Sally Eaton is going to sing Air at Independence Hall on April 21st. Well, Sally said that after that she'd like to stay over, have dinner, maybe a drink, and then on Earth Day, April 22nd, appear at the Belmont Plateau to talk about the problems of our environment with George Wald, Allen Ginsberg, Lewis Mumford, Senator Muskie, Ian McCard, and the rock bands Red Bone and the Great Speckled Bird. Earth Day took off quickly and organizing uh, was quite frantic. Putting together a number of different events, teach-ins across the Philadelphia region where important and well-known speakers appeared and culminated then in this massive event at Fairmount Park. What was perhaps unique to the events in uh, Philadelphia was the fact that on April 21st, so on the eve of Earth Day, a large crowd gathered in front of Independence Hall where Ian McCark read the Declaration of Interdependence. That was a document about humans re-evaluating their role in light of environmental issues and with respect to other living organisms. So that, that was a kind of a particular event in, in Philadelphia that led up to the massive celebratory, really quite happy party that took place at uh, Belmont Plateau and Fairmont Park the following day. This was a festival-like atmosphere. I mean, people were lounging about, engaging in conversation and games, and that was kind of the case across the country. So it was really a festival of a Woodstock-type proportions, I should say. The festivities began by about 10,000 marching from uh, the Philadelphia Art Museum to Fairmont Park proper, where two stages were set up. And then over the course of the day, the crowd ballooned into a massive event of 25 to 30,000 people who came together to uh, listen to politicians, thinkers, academics, activists, and uh, various performers to draw attention to environmental issues. It is really important to see the events uh, leading up to Earth Day and Earth Week across the nation in a much broader context. I mean, the 60s were really a very polarized time, but also bustling with activism on many different fronts, whether it was civil rights activism, activism against the Vietnam War, peace movements, feminist movements. So overall, I think the, the tumultuousness of the 60s need to be taken into consideration and the realization of a lot of people that civil protest actually does matter and can achieve things. To some extent, I think the quote-unquote success of these events need to be seen in in their ability to kind of harness the activist energy of the 1960s without the, the critical political edge.